And we are live. If you have found your way here, you are likely very early on in your stable diffusion and playing around with AI tools journey. And in this video, I'm going to demystify what is stable diffusion, who made it, what's it capable of, and how can you start using it? There are timestamps below, and let's just get started by answering the question, what is stable diffusion? Stable diffusion is an application for making waifus. <laughs> just kidding, sort of. At its most basic, Stable Diffusion is a software that lets you turn text into images. So you can take something that starts like this and now turn it into this. It exists among a rapidly growing field of what are called generative AIs, which basically just means you can create something from it, oftentimes from some type of input like text. Perhaps you have played around with Dolly 2 or Midjourney. Those are generative AI, ChatGPT, a large language model, slightly different, still somewhat of a generative AI, but at its very core, it's a software for turning text into images. That's it. It was released mainly by a company called Stability AI with some collaborations with some other different companies. And it was noteworthy because it was released as open source, which means they released all their source code, all the weights of the models. Anyone could just take it and use it and well, <laughs> people have. It was quickly adopted by the community that is into this kind of stuff. There were other applications out there before this, other types of models like uh, Dolly 2, Midjourney, but these were closed source models. So you couldn't just take it and do whatever you wanted with it, but stable diffusion, you can. So the community absolutely exploded. Now there's tons more tools, different user interfaces, and a continuing huge amount of development happening uh, based on that initial work by Stability AI. They've released two major versions, uh, 1.5 and 2.1, and the community is kind of forked between the two. 1.4 and 1.5 came out, they were wildly popular, and then they released 2.0, which was largely seen as a step backwards by the community. And so a lot of the development, even today, continues on 1.5. In fact, the cutting edge of st stable diffusion is really on 1.5 still. Version 2.1 did address some of the quality issues that people were concerned about in 2.0 um, at the cost of reducing a large amount of data in the data set. So the breadth of uh, images you could create was not as wide. The initial releases of Stable Diffusion were met with their fair share of controversy for a couple reasons. Number one is you could generate, let's say, not safe for work images. And number two was that the model was trained using proprietary copyrighted art from all around the world. It really just grabbed any image it could find and fed it into this model. So if you were a prominent artist and suddenly you were seeing all these generations of art in your style, that was seen as like a type of intellectual property theft. In January of 2023, a number of lawsuits were launched, not only at Stability AI, but also Midjourney and DeviantArt, both by artists who claimed that their works had been stolen and by Getty Images, who a little embarrassingly for Stability AI, you could generate images that had the Getty Images copyright on top of them. So it was very obvious that their images were used in Stability's training set. So with the release of 2.0 and 2.1, Stability AI allowed users to opt out and they also cut off uh, the training data that included not safe for work images. So for these reasons and a few more, the community largely still on 1.5 and in this channel we are going to be focusing on 1.5. Okay, so now on to how can we get started using it. First, it's worth pointing out that Stable Diffusion is not a program. It's not an application that you can load up. The way people use it is by using a UI. So there are basically user interfaces built on top that will allow you to use the different features of the Stable Diffusion model, and they have their own types of features built in as well. With this, there are many choices on how you will get started using Stable Diffusion. So I'm gonna break it down for people who have strong GPU computers and people who don't. If you don't have a powerful GPU, you will want to start in the cloud and you have many options. The place I recommend starting is with Dream Studio. This is Stability AI's own web application where 
For free, for a number of generations, you can play around with putting in prompts and seeing what comes out. You do have the option of buying more credits for more image generations, but this option tends not to be terribly popular with people because the tools are quite limited. But it's a good place if you're just starting out for free to go check it out. There are many other free options as well. You could use a Google Collab. There's a website called Hugging Face that has many different locations you can use for free. But overall, these are good places to just fiddle around, but you're not going to get full access to tools or unlimited generation on any of these free applications simply because it this stuff is expensive to run. So if you're getting a little more serious, I recommend going to something like Run Diffusion or trying out Stable Horde. Run Diffusion basically has GPUs in the cloud, so you just pay and it's a quite a quite a reasonable price and you can start generating lots and lots of images. You can also try Stable Horde, which is a pretty cool project that lets people like share their GPU time that they're not using with the Horde. So you can go on and just start using it with someone else's GPU essentially. But overall, using these free and cloud-based applications, which there are many more, um, you are going to be more limited than people who are running it locally, which we're going to talk about next. So for everyone with a powerful computer, particularly your GPU, and especially if you have eight gigabytes or more of VRAM, you are gonna wanna run this locally on your own computer. The most popular option is something called Automatic 1111. It's a web UI, and there is a huge amount of community development behind it. To be honest, the UI is a little outdated and looks kind of bad, but by far the cutting edge is happening here, so I recommend starting with Automatic 1111. There are web UIs that other people like though, such as Easy Diffusion, Invoke AI, and many, many more. And if you're on a Mac with an M1 processor, um, you can use Automatic 1111 or something called Diffusion B is quite popular as well. This channel will focus almost exclusively on Automatic 1111 since that's where their real development is and that's what most people are using. So subscribe below, there will be many more videos coming in this style. I'm gonna keep it very basic and just teach you how to use these tools. If my videos are not out yet, there are many other creators teaching you how to install and use Automatic 1111, so go check them out. And I'm gonna get started on the next video. I'll see you there.